to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. We had to cover their $200 promo price and do that. And we were like, we were just done at that point. We're just peace out sprint. Yeah. Done. And then T-Mobile bought them. And now you're back with sprint. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 right now I'm supporting him again through mint. Anyway, Tom Cruise sprint yeah, away right. from you. Just all full circle, man. I can't escape the system. I'm not a part of your system. You can't buy me. Hot dog, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on over to the Happy PCC. Happy birthday to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Let's step on over to the PCC, my friends. Welcome. Welcome to the system that I have full control of, you know? <laughs> um, so a little bit of an update. Last year, I had mentioned uh, Avatar 2 coming out, and I was very... Have you guys seen Avatar 2? I've not the, seen it. The no. Way of Water? I didn't okay. see the first I'm gonna, one. I'm going to do my best to oh, avoid... You didn't see the first, didn't see the first mm-hmm. one? Oh, okay. Well, then it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll do my best to avoid any specific spoilers or anything. It's too late. Um, he hasn't seen it by now. It's been I know. too long. Not, not for, for him, just for, for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean for the new one? I for the new one. For the, yeah. the original. <laughs> that one came out in 09. I will spoil whoa, the crap out whoa, of that whoa, one. Foot loose. No, no, no. Don't talk. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that. No spoilers. I listen to a podcast. Go to really um, old movies. Oh man, I forget what it is. There's a Morgan Freeman movie from the '90s, and he like stopped everybody mid conversation, 100 percent serious, and was like, "Dude, don't talk about it, okay? I'm gonna watch it." They're like, "When are you gonna watch no, it?" You're not. <laughs> uh, if anyway, you haven't watched a 30 year old movie, yeah, uh, maybe eventually it'll be on TBS one day, and they're like, "Oh hey, <laughs> I'm a, I've been meaning to watch this." Uh, anyway, Avatar to Avatar to the Way of Water. Um, I finally watched it, and the first time I talked about it, if you guys remember last PCC sometime last year when they announced it, I was pretty skeptical towards it because I was like, man, it's been, what did I say? That came out in 09, so 13, 14 years, or I guess 13 years at the time um, since it's come out. And like, it was such a big deal. It felt like it was, it was, it was promoted to be a big deal. Everybody was talking about it. It's like the biggest CGI thing that had happened. Yeah, that right. Point, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, th- and three, the 3D Titanic technology they used and, as yeah. well was crazy. Yeah, so it was like, crazy. there was a lot of really cool things about it, a lot of buzz about it. And then it just kind of, okay. And then kind of fizzled out and um, people still talk about it. People still reference it. Um, But it was weird to jump back on board for a second one and not just them announced that it was a second one, but announced they were going to release two, three, four, and five within the next like, within the next like five to 10 years. Yeah. Whenever they first came and said the sequel, they were like, oh yeah, we have all the way through part five planned, which is crazy. So I was like, man, you have this, you had, you had like all this momentum and then you were like, nah, but after seeing the way of water. I was actually really thankful that they waited that long because the technology just between the last 13 years has improved so much more. We're like, even though I'll get into this in a second, even though I don't think there was any huge strides taking, taken in regards to writing or storytelling, I think that it was still done really well visually. And just with the way the flow was written, the flow, uh, water, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. man, I, I just sat there like in awe of what was happening in front of me. Even though like everything's fake, it's basically you're watching a cartoon. It was gorgeous. Like mm. the whole thing was gorgeous. And in t- 10 years, I might look back at it and be like, that's so ugly. That's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but I was just, I was my, I don't know. Um, I don't do that with the original avatar. True. Yeah. yeah and yeah. maybe it's just because I saw it when it was like the greatest thing CGI yeah. had had yet, but like it still, it yeah. still looks well, cool. It still holds up. Yeah. I think similarly to Jurassic Park, the first Jurassic it Park. It is crazy T-Rex. how much that one holds yeah. up still. Like, yeah. Even compared, the to, even compared to the were amazing, right? Even compared to the newer, well, in the blend of that, that was one uh, thing that, uh, yeah, that that was one of the things that J.J. Abrams talked about when jumping on board with Star Wars. That one of the best ways that you can quote unquote fool the eyes is by mixing practical and CGI really well, mm-hmm. where you're jumping back and forth and your eyes don't really know it. And so, if you're going from a model of the Millennium Falcon to the real Millennium Falcon, and then blending like what you would use in practical with CGI, so he he did super cool. This is a side note, but <laughs> he did a super cool thing too, where he would take a webcam for um for CGI scenes, and he would shake the webcam like this, like the camera would actually shake on set. That way, they could mimic the same thing filming versus digital, like the digital side of it. Oh, so weird. there's a scene where like the Millennium Falcon like goes by and everything is fake in that scene. Um, but he's watching that scene going and then he adds like a little trimmer like for each little thing. And so when they when they take that movement, implement it into the animation and then you have the camera like jerk. The same. Yeah, so you have the camera jerk and then the same camera jerks whenever it cuts to Ray when she's in the Falcon. So super cool little things like that. Huh. And I think that we've also seen a lot of intentionality in regards to CGI with this. And so I think that 
what I'm curious about is like how much of a impact on culture this has. Like the way the first one was talked about, I feel like it had like socially, like people were stoked to go to the movies. People were really excited to go see it. I had friends telling me like, dude, you have to see it in 3D. And I saw it in 3D, it was such a different take on 3D. If you guys saw it, well, you didn't see it at all. If you saw it in 3D back then, I definitely like, did not see it in 3D. <clears throat> oh yeah, true. I That'll mean, you, you, go, me you would up, go wild. Dude. Yeah, and even, even with how they did it. So like old school 3D would be like stuff coming out of the screen. Right. Yeah. I love the way that Avatar, Avatar really introduced and pushed forward this idea of you going into the screen. And huh. so like whenever he's in a cockpit, um, I forget what those little machines were called that they walk yeah, around yeah, Pandora yeah. on, but you're in, the, you're in the cockpit with him and it feels like it feels like there's layers to the screen where like mm. the first thing you hit is the glass and then there's the trees and then there's the people That's flying in. Cool. So it feels more, de more deep. Um, and I love their execution of that, but I don't know what it's going to be culturally. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be, like what kind of shift there might be culturally, but I do think that, like I said a second ago, while there wasn't a lot of new, mo like there was very stereotypical motifs, very stereotypical things happening in the storytelling. It was just done well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I got you. So I'm excited to like, to hopefully this can Is be a this push. the next land before time. I don't know, man. I need to rewatch Land Before Time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like Land Before Time 54. And I know, right? So may, probably like they're just going to keep, <laughs> Dude, the first Land keep milking the cash cow. Fantastic. I love the Amazing. first Land Before Time. Yeah. I never saw any of the other ones. You watched it in the theater too. Uh, I didn't actually. What? No, wow. I didn't. Uh, because I was, I was older. I could have probably watched That's it. That's what the I mean. That's what yeah, I yeah. yeah. Actually, but I might have watched it in the theater. My grandmother <laughs> rented it for uh, my younger cousins who are all about eight years younger than me. And we were watching it one day. And I was probably like 16, 17. And Turn I was up. like, wait, wait. I love this. <laughs> yeah. It came out way before that. The Land Before Time? I don't remember when it I think first it was came in the, out. I think it was in the 80s. That early? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that okay, was a little Okay, so then I was like 13, it. maybe. I got you. So I was like, dude. I, I know we watched it on VHS yeah, at my grandmother's have, house. Yeah, we had the VHS of it. Um, that sounds more right. Oh, but what I was going to say is, I hope that this is a push towards good storytelling. And I feel like people have gotten lazy in storytelling. Like they're holding the hand of the audience. 100%. Instead of There's just too many remakes. Oh gosh, I I watched the Fablemans as well, and I, that's what Steven Spielberg films. But obviously, it's going to be done well. But utilizing the medium of cinema to tell a good story, oh, where yeah, you yeah. don't have to just hold the hand of the audience. Like, okay, now this person's a bad oh, guy. And maybe eighty-eight. Okay, 88. yeah, yeah. And yeah. maybe to be fair, maybe what we mean is it seems like the big blockbuster movies are struggling with storytelling. Like, yeah. there's probably some really good movies. Oh, totally. Yeah. Being made that are great stories. It's just not the ones that are like um. Absolutely, you know, yeah. So, stage. so a, a movie this big, the biggest movie since COVID, I would, I would probably say. Like, I don't know the, the numbers, but like, I feel like this was a big push for people to go back to theaters um, since COVID. Since everything else is now available through stream pretty quickly, I hope this can help enhance and push the medium of cinema forward. I'm excited about it. So, I mean, it might not, but it's cool. Yeah, Ryan, what are we talking about today? Pretty man? neat. Hey, pretty man. Neat. Uh, today we are talking. Uh, we we have a topic that was suggested to us by our good friend Stacy. Hey, hey, Stacy. Stacey. And Ryan's he, arms are bigger than yours, Stacey. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't say that, Stacey. I didn't say that. Uh, and um, he wants us to talk a little bit about what it means to renew our minds, to set our minds on the things above uh, and not the things of the earth. So we're going to talk about that. Kind of the jumping off place, Colossians 3, set your mind on the things above. The but, things that happen. but Ryan, isn't, the, isn't life in Christ more about how we feel than how we think? <laughs> well, actually, Pierce, uh, while I would say that emotion is part of it, I think we can't divorce emotion from the conversation. I, I think that we we have to think correctly on Jesus because otherwise the emotions that we're experiencing are probably based on a false premise. Hmm. And, and so what we think about Christ has to be true first. And then the emotions that will be born from that, I think are great. I but, think what people probably don't realize is that I, I believe this is correct, that your emotions are a result of how you think. Mm -hmm. No, I would absolutely and, say and that's so correct. And so like, I mean, I feel like the most important thing is to think differently and then yeah. that'll affect your emotions. Yeah. So, so I, I'll give you a couple of thoughts really quickly uh, because this is something that I have thought about <laughs> <laughs> for, for a long time. And so, uh, uh, that was perfect. Got it. <laughs> 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 oh, anyway, we won't keep that going. But uh, Colossians 3 1, right, says, If then you have been raised with Christ, set your mind on the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, not the things of the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And, and the immediate context there, if you go back to chapter 2, 
in chapter two, he is reminding them that uh, that the Sabbath isn't anything and that the feast days don't have any specific weight and the new moon and the festival days don't have any specific weight, that Christ is what has weight. Mm-hmm. And he's speaking about to, to Jewish Christians, but also to Gentile Christians who have been swayed by some of the Judaizers who have been saying, look, if you're going to be a real Christian, you've got to follow like these. that's more the context of Colossians, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's the majority of these people are are Gentiles yeah. who have been swayed or are trying to be swayed. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to remember that like all the places, right, that Paul went, he went into synagogues, these synagogues. Right. And so there was a Jewish uh, oh, that's group. Fair. That's fair. You know, These are probably, at the least, these are people who, if they're Jews, they're Jews by conversion, not Jews by birth, probably. Maybe. Right? Maybe. Yeah. So if you go back to the Assyrian captivity and the Babylonian captivity. Oh, that's true. That's fair. And then they're, they're scattered the throughout. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, yeah. So like, that's why there's these synagogues all over. It was why it was his practice to first go into the synagogue and first proclaim Christ in the right, synagogue. Right. And, and so I, I don't think you're wrong. I think that if we're speaking in terms of percentages, it's probably the majority are, are Gentiles and the Jews, many of them are probably not trekking all the way back to Jerusalem every right. year for the feast days. And so right. it, at any rate, there are these Jewish teachers that we see throughout the book of Acts that are coming into these communities and they're calling themselves believers, and maybe they are, in fact, but they're teaching uh, the fringe Jews and mm-hmm. these new believing Gentiles, you need to be a Jew. You need to behave mm-hmm. like a Jew to be a good Christian. And so the immediate context of Colossians there, it, at the end of Colossians 2, so he's already said, like, don't let anyone uh, pass judgment. judgment on you in regards to the Sabbath, the feast days, what you eat. And then beginning in verse 20, he's going to say, if with Christ you died to the elemental principles of the world, uh, he's referenced that earlier in chapter two, that these elemental principles of the world are human traditions. Yeah. And, and so he says, these things look good. These human traditions look good, but they have no value in stopping the desires of the flesh. And then he says, so since we've been raised with Christ, we need to think heavenly. We need to put our mind on the things above. So we'll come back to this in a minute, but I want to, I want the immediate context to be understood that like to think Heavenly in this case specifically is to to not um, not let the Jewish tr- traditions and customs and the Jewish law even be the thing that shapes how you're doing Christ right mm-hmm. and how you're uh, approaching Christ. So then Romans twelve one and two says, therefore I urge you, brethren, in view of God's mercy, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Don't be conformed any longer. Uh, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm-hmm. And the immediate context there is you really have to go back. He's been, chapter one. <laughs> yeah. But he's been talking in Romans about how righteousness and salvation are matters of faith and not works, works of the law. Mm-hmm. And then in chapter nine, he says, man, I wish that Israel would believe. Um, that's my desire for them. In the mm-hmm. beginning of chapter 10, he says, they are zealous for God, but, uh, but not based on the righteousness he supplied through Christ based on the righteousness that they've accomplished through works. Mm-hmm. And then he's, he's in chapter 11 saying, so the Jews have been hardened so that the Gentiles can be brought in. And then in the last eight to 10 verses of chapter 11, he mentions mercy four times, which is super important. And it's the mercy that God is showing to the Gentiles by bringing them to salvation. And then he says, and then also God will eventually show mercy to the Jews again and bring them to salvation. Mm-hmm. Chapter 12, therefore, in light of God's mercy, present your body... <clears throat> as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, don't conform to the patterns that were yours before. Don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. And, and in this case, it is, uh, uh, he, he, is, he is addressing the division over works-based righteousness. Mm-hmm. Like the, so don't, don't let that be the standard anymore. Think differently. Okay, and, and one clarity on that, he says, Please. don't be conformed right. to the pattern of the world, which is like this physical action. Right. Instead, and his rebuttal is, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I right. think what he's actually saying there is the way that you move away from the way you used to do life is to change how you think. Yeah. And or, or allow your thinking to be changed. Maybe it's a better 100%. way to say it. 100%. Instead of, instead of, my point is, instead of acting differently. Right. He doesn't say, you used to act like this, so now act like this. What he right. says, you used to act like this, so change how you think and mm-hmm. let the result of that be yeah. your actions follow. Uh, the implication yeah. is that you were thinking wrong, which is yep. why these these actions Works were based salvation. Yeah. Yeah. you're yeah. thinking wrong about salvation 
And, and so he's wanting to shape that. Now, very similarly to that is Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, which says, put off the old self, which is growing corrupt according to the deceitful lust of the flesh, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and then put on the new self created in the likeness of God, righteous and holy. Now in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, he's talking again about the division between the Jewish and uh, Gentile believers. And he is reminding them that they all are the same on the basis of faith in Jesus, mm-hmm. that Jesus is the thing that unifies them. And he says that very plainly in chapter two. And then in chapter four, at the beginning, he reminds them that like, look, this is, this is who you are. Like mm-hmm. you're in Christ, one body, one Lord, one faith. Right. And then, then he tells them kind of what you just commented on, Mike. So I'm so like, it's so perfect that you said that because then he says, don't walk any longer as the Gentiles walk mm-hmm. in the futility of their mind. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, don't, don't behave anymore. Like, and, and he's talking half of his audience, at least is Gentiles. And, and so he's telling them like, you can't think anymore like this. Yeah. What he's mm-hmm. actually saying is the reason you used to act that way is because of your perspective. The yeah. way you, the way, if you think yeah. my righteousness is gained through works that I do on my own, that will produce these certain actions. If you right. think my worth is rest in who Christ is by faith and that thought then produces a life that reflects Jesus and we right. call a godly lifestyle. That's the difference. Right. And I, I think there's this like, there's a sense of that all, all across the new Testament of like the, this reshaping of how you think of your perspective that actually influences your entire life. And I think you can even see that outside of, of Christianity. Sure. You see people who, um, well you, you comment all the time, Ryan, about like how you, your struggle still with insecurities is like this battle in your mind. Yeah, 100%. You know, so I think that's like where most people are. You act insecure if you think of yourself in a way that isn't, where you yeah. don't have worth or you don't have value. Yeah. That's where the insecurity comes from. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I mean, every time I step on a dance floor, which is like once every 10 years, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like, I got this incredible rhythm. Like I'm a musician and I'm like, this, I just suck at this. So I step on a dance floor and I'm like, <laughs> I probably suck at dancing because I've convinced myself in my mind. That's like, you know what I'm saying? It's a dumb example, but it's it's that's exactly what Paul's saying. Like what yeah. you think affects how you live. Yeah, which it, I think is Galatians five as well. Um, yes, in a different in a different manner of of saying it. Walk by the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Let the Spirit influence you, and you won't gratify the desires of your flesh. And it's yeah. it's this perspective shift. Even though that's not necessarily like changing your mind, it is allowing the Spirit to be the one that influences. Mm-hmm how you think and how you act rather than yeah. you doing it yourself. Yeah. Uh, in, in all of these cases, the, the renewing your mind, the setting your mind on the things above, um, the, the be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In all of these cases, it has to do with thinking correctly yeah. on Jesus and th- the work that he's done and salvation in him. And so like, that's, that is at the core of, uh, I think Christian maturity, I think it's the core of, of Christian living. I think mm-hmm. it's the core of uh, peace and joy, like all these things that are impacted by how we think about our situation, how we think about our life. Uh, if, if we really believe uh, that, if we really believe like Paul in Romans 8, that the sufferings of this present age pale in comparison to the glory that will be brought to us the day Christ Jesus is revealed, then it changes how we deal with the sufferings of this present age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so if we think correctly yeah. about Christ, not, not just the cross, but all of it, yeah. the, the story of redemption holistically, yeah. uh, Jesus as God, uh, creator and sustainer of all things, uh, not God the Father, but Jesus and the Father being one, that right. kind of thing. If, if we think about that correctly, it shapes, like if Jesus is just a good man, mm-hmm. that's going to shape your theology. Yeah. Uh, if that's your belief system about him, if Jesus is God, uh, in the beginning yeah. with God was God, like that shapes how you read the gospel. I actually mm-hmm. think that's maybe what, maybe, maybe what the thought was behind the daily quiet time was mm. shaping how you think about who you are in Christ and who God is. Um, and I think that's, I think that's fine. I think where it got, where it got, uh, muddled was it became, what Colossians two talks about as this like work works based mm. perspective, um, but I think in reality one of the benefits we have having the scripture is that we're able to read the scripture and understand who God is and who we are in Him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and probably we would say Ryan in the years of counseling, um, 
that we've done with people or just talking to them, even like piercing the years of just talking to people about struggles through life. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of the time that people have a struggle, it's because their perspective's off. Right? Yeah. Marriage counseling. Yeah. One thing you say over and over again to people is um, you're, you're, you're not loving each other from the perspective of Jesus. You're right. loving each mm -hmm. other. You're trying to love each other from a perspective of the world instead of Jesus. Right. And it's funny how many people, once they finally get that, go, Oh, like it's yeah. simpler than I was making. I was looking for a list of things to do, like fireproof, where I could like, <laughs> yeah. which, you know, it's fine. It's fine to work through that stuff. But until your perspective is what you said a second ago, this is, this is a Jesus perspective. Yeah. My worth rests in Jesus, not in how I think I'm doing as a husband or a wife or as a parent or as in anything else I'm doing in life. It's a perspective shift. Yeah. We, we had talked earlier this year, Ryan, about, um, some people that I was interacting with just talking about truth yeah, and, um, and a couple of people's response. So, um, we're going through with the youth and I kind of branched that into seeing young adult stuff as well. Just talked about truth, just core principles of Christianity, unwavering things within Christianity. It doesn't matter where we are culturally, where sure. you are emotionally, whatever this stands true, this remains. Um, and so it was interesting beginning that conversation with these people, because, um, in regards to perspective, they would say something that is definite so for instance someone brought up like i love that the the fact like the truth is um that my righteousness is held by christ that that is yeah. that, that is definite that i am righteous because of what christ has done and then i began to, to question for like well how do we know that like how do we know for sure that that's true and then um this person who like i i mean i know that they they, are, they have the purest of hearts and the purest of intentions but their first response was well i needed to be definite right now with where i am in my life and so their 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 filter for that the perspective of that was i need this truth to be definite so like there's other stuff that's not definite but i need this to be definite right now and um but what happens when you don't need it, it to be it's definite, definite like, because is i it, need it to yeah, be, is, yeah is it conditionally definite mm -hmm. which they don't mean but it, but their perspective right, right, right. is skewed by their oh, or I by think their they language do. oh i got you i think they do mean it yeah they're, they just don't understand the implications yes. of that. Oh, I got you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. not thinking down the road. They're thinking like this This specifically at this right. moment. Like, I got you. So helping shape that perspective. Kind of, right, kind of, yeah. kind of agreeing with you, Micah, that like, let's understand that, yes, right here and now, like this is a truth that is encouraging you deeply, but not because you need it right now, but because it is it's true. true. It's because it's truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then allow that truth to change the way you think, to shape the way you think and about Maybe that's yourself, what I meant a others. second ago by like the, the original intent with quiet time. Like, I think us three would say part of part of the reason we feel like we've had so much growth in the last 10 years mm -hmm. is because we've been inundated with conversations about the scripture. Yeah. Yes. And the more that our mind is wrapped around the truth, mm -hmm. what you said, Pierce, of who God is yeah. and then who we are in him, in Christ, that that affects every bit of our confidence, yeah, of our security. And so I, I think I think mistakenly sometimes people think, well, you guys are pastors, you're supposed to be different. No, 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 no. We're not different. We right. just have a different calling, if you will, or a different um, yeah. assignment in the body of Christ. But our, I think if we were going to say like our maturity level is literally based on, on the, the fact that we've been inundated with conversations about the scripture and that we're mm -hmm. reading the scripture and that sure. we're challenging each other on thoughts, even in the scripture, like we're not just letting each other off the hook. No, yeah, never pain in the butt, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, but like, I, I can only say that because I joke about it because it's the, the conversations that we've had over 20 years and Pierce, I keep saying 10 years because I, my relationship with you, even though I knew you longer ago than 10 years ago, like we really became friends 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the 710. Must have been good friends if Pierce was just falling asleep while you're talking. Yeah, to yeah, yeah right. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, like, uh, one of the things, and I, and I don't, I don't want to fail to address this because one of the things that Stacy asked me was like, how do we, how do we move our mind to think correctly? And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I, and I think, I don't remember how he stated it exactly, but that was the implication of it. And I think one of the things that's really important is, um, very seldom, very seldom do people think they're wrong about anything. Mm -hmm. And, and so in order to think correctly about anything, you have to first ask yourself honestly, why do I believe what I believe? Mm -hmm. um, because if you can't examine your own your own belief system, then there's probably no room for growth. And and so I grew up in church. I've been in church my entire life, nearly forty eight years of life. I've been in church. 
two weeks ago was my Christian birthday. Like I've been a Christian since I was three. Like Mm -hmm. I I wanted to preach since I was four. I went to all the services that were available growing up. And even like in middle school and high school, like whatever the extra thing was, I did it. And so by the time I was in college, my biblical self-confidence was, uh, was pretty strong. Like Mm -hmm. I, I just thought that I knew it Mm -hmm. because I'd been around it for 18, you know, 19, 20 years, right at this point. And so I'm in college, I'm a few years into college and I was so certain of everything that I believed um, until I started teaching college students when I was 23. And when I started teaching college students and I was 23 years old, I had 50 college students. I met with, uh, I met with a group of them every Tuesday on campus at tech at the Chick-fil-A in the UC. We'd sit and have lunch and we'd talk. And every Monday night we had Bible study and it was usually the same, like six to eight kids Monday night and, and Tuesday afternoon. And these kids asked hard questions and (laughs) suddenly my answers felt very weak to me (laughs) because I'm giving them these answers and I'm like, well, it's just, that's, that's how it is. And I'm giving them answers (laughs) and I'm giving them answers like, well, you know, that's, that's what my mom had always said, or I'm giving them answers like, well, that's what my youth pastor used to say. Or I went to a conference where I heard that once. And what I realized is that these 18 year old kids, I was 23 year old kid, you know, I was a few years Mm -hmm. ahead of them, but these 18 year old kids were doing something that I had never dared to do. And what was crazy is because I had been in the Bible for a couple of times at that point, they, they looked at me as a guy who knew his stuff. And so they felt emboldened to ask questions, yeah. mm-hmm. which I had never done. I had never asked questions. Mm-hmm. So as they're asking questions of me and I'm struggling to try to find an answer better than, well, that's just what I've been told. Mm-hmm. It kind of started to piss me off. Yeah, <laughs> And so I started asking questions. I was like, okay, I need to re-examine why I believe mm-hmm. what I believe mm-hmm. instead of being able to say or the youth pastor said or my preacher used to say or my mom used to say, I need to be able to know what the scripture teaches. Mm-hmm. And, and there were a lot of things that, this shouldn't surprise us, there were a lot of things in the Bible, stories and stuff that I had never heard mm-hmm. growing up because they're just not pretty and they're not wrapped well, yeah. you know? And so there were tons of things that I had never heard. And then there were some things about really common stories that I had been taught wrong. But because they're such common stories, mm-hmm. I was for sure I knew them. Yeah. And, and so in my early to mid-20s, I really started going, okay, I, I need to ask hard questions of myself. Um, and thankfully, at that point, I had some good friends, Scott and Ryan. And then I've continued to have good friends with you guys that just, I've always had friends since I was, that we can ask those hard questions of yeah. each other. You, you would have uh, had to seek it out, though. Like to answer the question yeah. Stacey's asking, like there's, I, I don't think it's different than working out. Right. In mm-hmm. my, in my perspective, I mean, you guys might temper me on this, but like if I have no interest in, well, let's say it's like you and Stacy and Robert, like you guys have these like competitions you do with each other where, yeah. you know, like you're these workout competitions, like you wouldn't do it if you didn't have some desire for what the outcome was. Right. And so how you think about working out changes how you act. Mm. Yeah. If, if I have no desire to work out in that way, I'm not going to work out. Right. So like, it's, it's funny to me that people ask like, well, how do I grow spiritually? How do I change the way that I think? How do I mature oh, in Christ? Yeah. Want it. <laughs> you probably don't yeah. care is what my, my point is. If, if there's no sense, I'm not saying you have to be the person who like reads the scripture like Ryan Douglas does. What I'm saying is, is if there's a desire in you which I think there probably is in all of us. If there's a desire in you to grow, there will be, let me me give you the whole thought before you comment because I want you to hear the whole thing. No, I I like where you're going. I think the desire in you um, will be that you will start to pursue things. Here's what I think has happened. I think the majority of times what happens is, is, is how we pursue that growth is through the list he gives in Colossians 2. Yeah. Through works of our own. Mm-hmm. Like we're trying to, I, I think it's interesting. He doesn't just talk about the law because in verse eight, he says, see that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty yeah. deceit. So it's right. it's not just, I'm obeying this list of rules and regulations. Which is also, it's, by the way, in Romans and also, by the way, in yeah, Ephesians. These, exactly. Same these idea. false teachings. So, so what, we've, what we've had for so long in Christianity is I have this desire to grow. So what do I do? And the pastor gets up on Sundays, not you. Um, or I'd kick you in the nuts if you did this. Here's, <laughs> Thank you. Here's three things you can do this week to be a yeah. better person. Yeah. That's how Christianity typically is. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so our well, perspective of growth is yeah. I got to do these list of things. And what it's missing is none of that actually produces growth. Mm-hmm. Can it be a catalyst for it? Yeah. Maybe. 
Yeah. You know, if if it's if it's from the correct perspective, yeah. but if my desire is is to grow, literally all Paul is saying in Colossians and Romans is start to change the way you think yeah. and then watch how it changes. Mm -hmm. All he's saying to you, Ryan and Robert and Stacy, is if you want to get to this point of fitness, change the way you think about that and yeah. watch how it affects the way that you pursue the goal yeah, of, for sure. of being stronger. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh there there has to be there has to be a desire. Um so maybe that was almost uh it wasn't a rebuttal of what you're saying, but like I think what it wasn't a rebuttal, rebuttal at all. I think what I people could, like was. could yeah. hear you saying was um, like you're just looking for a way. How'd you say it? You have to like first be convinced that you're not right about everything. I, I think maybe what would be stronger is for someone to say, I think if you're in the place where you're like, I don't need any help, that means your desire isn't actually to grow. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, super problematic. Because there is so much scripture yeah. <laughs> that will... will Man, one of my favorite old songs is um, The Love of God, mm -hmm. old super old hymn in the yeah. third verse. Um, there's a part of it that says, um, if basically if if the oceans were filled with ink and the sky oh, was a yeah. piece of paper and every man was a scribe by trade and every stock on earth was a quill to, and the goal was to write the love of God with the ink in the ocean on the paper of the that sky. Song. That's a great song. Um, there wouldn't be enough room on the sky to ride it in the oceans. We would drain dry. This mm -hmm. is, this is what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you would never come to the point where you're like, I got it. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so to, for someone to have to convince themselves that they don't know it all is basically that, that would be like a, like a 500 pound person saying I'm strong. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think the point is to convince yourself you're, you're not right about everything. I think the point is for that person to realize not that you're not right, but that, um, your your perspective's in the wrong place. So, so even though it may be true that we're not right about everything in our 20s or 30s or whatever, right? Maybe the what you're saying is the better approach to that is if God is infinite, if God's grace and his love and his mercy and his power are infinite, then there's no way you know it all. No. And, and yeah. so, so you, what you, if you begin were, with the process of, I want to know God more. What, yeah. if the, what if the first from three when you got saved to 23 when you started thinking this way, what if those first 20 years were part of the growth process is what I'm saying. Sure. Like, yeah, you don't like, you don't dismiss it now because yeah. like there's this, mm -hmm. there's this time it takes to shift sure. and yeah. change. Like I, I don't, I don't know why people want it instantly. I mean, that's just Western culture. Probably we want it yeah. like right now, but well, it's, it's why, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's why we have so many pills and stuff like that. Yeah. We got to have it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, you, you have two options. You can, it, this isn't everybody and I understand that. So don't send me letters and emails and stuff. I won't read them anyway, but, uh, people still send you letters. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Everybody, please I'm gonna send please you a letter. Send, right? send us a letter. <laughs> but like handwritten, <laughs> yes. but like a lot you get of stamps at the post office. And if anybody was wondering, <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of times there are a lot of times doctors could say, look, try this for six months to a year and change some things yeah. and we'll see where you are in a year. But most of the time it's like, well, look, Let's put you on this what, medicine we know right you're now. not going to do it. So here's a pill. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think know? even like, it's a, such a good point because we want it now. Yeah. I think even like Stacy asking the question or other people asking you the question, how do we change the way we think? That is literally part of the process That's of you great. changing the way you think. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm sure. saying. Yeah. They're, they're asking the right question. Yep. It's the right direction. Yeah. Because go ahead. I was going to say too, like in regards to, to instantaneous maturity or whatever, however we would phrase that. Um, I think I, I may be alone in this camp, but like me and a few of my friends, like I remember early in college, like reading the scripture and be like, man, there was, there was immediate change. There's immediate, mm. um, there seemed to be some immediacy there. Why, why am I taking so long to grasp all this on? Like you'd look at the stories and acts that people receive, receive the spirit, receive the gospel. There'd be this great change. Um, which I think there is something to be said about the Lord working in that way. But also we see stories like Peter, who is used a ton, and we see the Holy Spirit fill him up in Acts 2. We see this brilliant sermon. We see this brilliant ministry. And then later, Paul even talks about this racism that Peter still has. There's these, these parts of his perspective that haven't completely shifted to the gospel and that, that Paul needs to call out in him. And so you're right, like this, like recognizing that there's this growth process that not only do we see around us in our community here and now, but we see in the scriptures that we see these people um, growing and learning mm -hmm. as God shapes and molds them it's and continual, shi continual yeah. shifts their perspective because that, that, that level of division for Peter was so ingrained in him. And I'm not saying that God can't do it instantaneously, but the way that God did it was God used community with Paul and God yeah. took I mean, time. And, and maybe the question is what do what instantaneously, the like, 
Is there like a certain level of maturity on an individual <laughs> basis we're trying to attain to? Or mm. is the instruction like change the way you think by understanding who God is and who you are in Christ? Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then watch what happens. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know why we're like, okay, this is where it differs from the working out illustration is you guys probably have a goal. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, yeah. So at some yeah. point, like, I mean, it's possible, I guess you can get a six pack and go at like eight. I mean, that's possible. But like <laughs> in, in Christianity, I don't think it is that way. Yeah, I think yeah. that it's just continually growing. Yeah. And so maybe the problem is that people are looking for mm. some place to get to. At like the finish they, line. they see, yeah. they see somebody, they're like, I want to be at this person's level. And that's a stupid perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's the reason that people think like the only reason you'd be bothered by not seeing instantaneous growth is if you're comparing yourself to other people. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And that's what I think yeah. is not in the scripture. It is a mm -hmm. perspective of understand who you are in Christ and let, let that affect yeah. your, your maturity, your growth. It's interesting to me in Colossians, um, before he gets to that place, Colossians 2, uh, 6 and 7, he says, therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him mm. or do life in him. And then here's what he says. It's almost like, here's how you can walk in him. You're rooted in him. You're being built up in him and you're established in the faith, just as you were taught about in Thanksgiving. So he sets the premise for why you can do life in Christ. It's because you're, and these three things he says, rooted, built, being built up and established are perspectives. Right. You're rooted mm. in Christ. You're being built up in Christ, which is actually how it should be probably translated there. And you're established in the faith. That's the premise. This isn't, this isn't go to church, read your Bible. Right. It's yeah, literally it's, understand who you are in Christ. Yeah. And then he gives them the warning, understanding that mm -hmm. you're doing life in Christ. Don't let anybody get you off track by philosophy and works right. of the law and all these things. And don't eat this and don't do this. And all these, all these things that he says have no value, mm -hmm. right? Have no, to your word earlier, have no weight. Um, instead he says, fix your eyes on set your minds on things above, fix your eyes yeah. on, on Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the perspective. So it's funny that he sets the premise. Here's who you are in Christ. Don't let someone throw you off of that. As you, as you do life in him, don't let someone throw you off by all these other things. Right. Instead, continue to focus on what I just told you in verses six and seven of who you are in Christ. Set yeah. your mind on things above. So maybe this, if, if you wanted a simple answer to Stacey's question, what does it look like to like be renewed in my thinking? It's verses six and seven, I think, of, yeah. of Colossians two. Remember who you are yeah, in Christ. The, the, the temptation is to say, well, read your Bible more. Be sure you're going to church. The temptation is just to give people another set of rules. And, and look, mm -hmm. th those things I think are really helpful in understanding who we are in Christ. It's part of the process. Provided you're reading the Bible with that bent yeah, and mm -hmm. you're going to a church that preaches it that way. Right. Yeah. But if, if you've been taught to read the Bible in a way where you have to pull out your to-do list with every text. Oh man. So, you know, Jacob deceived his brother. And so this is a good lesson on how not to deceive. And I need to be careful. <laughs> I'm not a Jacob. Mm -hmm. Like how many times have, have we heard stuff like that? Like, are you a Jacob, yeah. you know, or are you a David or are you, a yeah. Mo you know, like we, we want to moralize the entire scripture. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so if, if the Bible reading comes with that bent and if the church you're going to comes with, like you were saying, here's the three new things you need to do this week to be a better person and a better Christian, then that's going to continue to create problems for you because yeah. it isn't it isn't the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And and so you're going to bump into a wall and you're going to bump into obstacles down the line and you're going to be like, crud, this, this is hard. This doesn't feel right. This like, why is you're going to feel like God's mad at you? You're going to feel like you've let God down. You're going to feel like you're a disappointment. You're going to feel like you're a like you're going to keep bumping into all these thoughts. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you come to the place where you're like, look, I'm going to read the Bible to understand who God is. Yeah. And as I understand who God is, what that does, and I understand his, his story of redemption, what it does then is it allows us to view ourselves correctly within that story of redemption and mm -hmm. where, where our spot is like, yeah. and, and then to see that Christ has loved us and redeemed us um, from sin and death and the power of sin and that we've been made righteous and like it. So don't hear me say, don't read your Bible and don't go to church. I'm just saying like the way you read your Bible and the kind of church you go to also shapes how you're going to think about God. Yeah. Well, that would be like, yeah, that'd be like telling someone not to work out. Yeah. Um, or on the flip side saying, just work out without yeah. any purpose. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's like, that's like going to church yeah. in that way is without, well, without purpose. I'm, I'm doing a workout challenge right now just for myself. And, uh, and it's very difficult and it's exhausting. Um, but I've, I've 
looked at a That's lot why of your arms are like 20 times bigger than Stacy's. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day. Imagine Dude, 20, 20 times, 20 bigger? times. <laughs> that would be so awkward. That would be super bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, his are so small. I mean, it's like possible. Yeah. Three, 320 inch arms. <laughs> um, but Stacy just crying at home right now. He's gonna kill me this <laughs> next Sunday. He's like, man, I'm never giving him an idea again. Uh, no, but like, it's super difficult. Like, this is a difficult workout challenge, and it's it's one that I had been thinking about doing for like a year, and just decided to pull the trigger and do it this year. Uh, and I was looking through some of the other people's testimonials, and they have a lot of different like before and after pictures. It's a 75 day challenge. So if you're wondering, it's 75 hard. Some of you have heard of it. Some of you haven't. Anyway, uh, and uh, all of them have noticeable differences. Mm. Uh, some of the people started off really big and were very, very overweight. And their primary difference was that they lost like 30 or 40 pounds. And wow. then other people started off already in pretty good shape, but now they're very toned and whatever. One guy, I found one guy who looked the exact same <laughs> from day one to day 75. <laughs> and I, I want you to hear this. Hundreds of pe- f- photos of people who they had really great success. One dude, and he writes this whole blog about, yeah, this didn't change anything for me. And I don't, and I'm sitting here, and at the point that I read his He's article, a blizzard every day. Right. <laughs> at the point that I read his article, I was like 20 days into this 75 day challenge. And I'm sitting here and I'm going, then he didn't do something right. Because yeah. one of the one of the mm-hmm. challenges is you have to do two separate 45 minute workouts a day. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow. Yeah. And I'm thinking, so this guy's this guy's walking in his yard, you know, yeah. for an hour and a half. Like he's, yeah. you know, something like it, it, you also have, they don't care what the workouts are. You also have to follow some sort of dietary plan. They also don't care what the dietary plan is because it's different for each person, right? They're not going to tell you it has to be this thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so I'm this thinking chips and queso. Yeah. It's gotta be <laughs> like, and he wasn't a it's big my, dude. It's my plan. Yeah. All the fatty food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my plan, right? Yeah. He wasn't a big dude, but the point being, <laughs> He didn't see the results because he didn't really something didn't yeah something didn't click in his head yeah, yeah. and I, I think what I think that's actually what people I'm glad you brought that up I know it wasn't on purpose but I think it's actually what people are looking for when they're when they're looking for like spiritual maturity they're looking for the 75 day challenge where that's why I was where they can so like well. yeah yeah where they can like see the difference I, I'll say this I think no I am a hundred percent sure that if you actually walk in him as verse six says in Colossians yeah. two, that if you do life in Christ, understanding who you are, that you can look back on every year and notice the things that have changed. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about a perspective of like maturity growth because I think there's always like ebb and flow yeah. to life. I mean, what if this, what if you spent the whole year in just chaos mm-hmm. that you might not notice as many, you know, simple things like, oh man, I'm, I'm more patient or something like that. But yeah. I think you look back and you notice I'm going to take maturity out of this statement for a moment just to understand. I think what you notice is that your life was bent on Jesus for the year. Yeah. And then you can start pointing out things like, oh, this has been a little bit different in me. And you start noticing. But the goal is not to look back and notice. Mm-hmm. Right. The goal is to walk in him. Yeah. The goal is to yeah. just do life in Christ. I think that's what people miss. This isn't a... This isn't like an end result a goal. Challenge. It's yeah. not. It is literally just to set my entire life on this perspective of mm-hmm. I'm just going to do life in Jesus. How do I yeah. do that? I understand who I am in Christ. I'm rooted yeah. in Him. I'm being I'm being built up and I'm established. I'm not going to be swayed by people saying, you know, here's your 30 day challenge or do yeah. these things or mm-hmm. like you can't eat this, you can't do this. I'm not going to be swayed by that stuff. I'm just going to set my heart on Jesus and say, set my mind on Jesus and just say, I'm going to do my life in you. I think that's what people miss. They're looking yeah. for it. They're looking for a fitness goal kind of yeah. system. And it's a that's checklist. not, yeah. And that's not how it is. And, and, and for those of you who like the checklist, so do I. Like I, I like a checklist. I just do. Um, but if, if you're measuring your life by the checklist, rather than measuring your life by Christ. That's a great way That's to say problematic. It. That's a great yeah, way to yeah, say yeah. Because the checklist itself isn't bad because some people need the checklist. Yeah. Like in order to kind of like, I know every day when I wake up, here are the things I need to do today. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes have a physical checklist that I'm able to check off. That's very cathartic for me. Mm-hmm. I like being able to go, oh, I got this thing done. Mm-hmm. But if I'm doing it for the sake of getting it done, or if, or if I'm, if I'm, if there's no flexibility in the checklist, mm. if the checklist is the thing that controls my sense of value, my sense of purpose, my yeah. sense of worth, then I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. And does it make sense? Yep. Uh, Maybe it, you could say it like this. Yeah, go. You could set up a plan like, you know what? I'm going to read, I'm going to read the scriptures from this time to this time every day. And I'm going to 
spend time in prayer from this time to this time every day. And I'm going to go to church every week from this time to this time. Those are all phenomenal things. I think in my mind sure. set up, um, if, if, if what spurs you on to do those things is the checklist, yeah. you're probably doing it from the wrong perspective. Yeah. If what spurs you on to do those things is that your desire is to do life in Christ, mm -hmm. then it's probably the right perspective. Yeah. Then you're going to have someone like you it, who likes the regiment that you're going to benefit from that. You're going to have someone like me who, you know, here, yesterday listened to two hours of um, some narratives in the yeah. Old Testament. Um, and to be completely honest, it was fairly boring. <laughs> it was still the chronological. And so oh, it's like yeah. the same story twice. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, just listen to this. Stop. You know what I mean? But like, it's, it's this, it's the same perspective. I wasn't listening. Cause I was like, Oh, got to check it off today. Right. I'm not a checklist person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and he here's how you can tell if you're controlled by the checklist. Um, I think if, if you're a parent, right. Or whatever. And, and you have, I like that you say, Oh, I've got some time today to set aside to read the Bible your kid gets sick at school and throws up. And then you, that time you get called right in the middle of the time you're about to sit down and mm -hmm. read the Bible and you got to go pick up your kid. If at the end of the day, you're feeling guilty, you're controlled by the oh, checklist. Yeah, you should blame point. your kid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you messed up my day. <laughs> yeah. Then you're controlled by the checklist. Yeah. Whereas if it's genuinely a desire about knowing God, then you're not offended by the fact that you missed your Bible reading time today because your, yeah. your desire for God is still in yep. check. Yeah. Great point. I have another thought on that. I think maybe the busyness of life sometimes masks um, the relationship with Jesus. Oh, 100%. Uh, and I think here's for me, one of the tells for me is when I, for you, for me personally, <laughs> yes. And I think there could be some application in this course, that people yeah. could take. But for me, there are moments when I look up at the sky, especially I freaking love the sky in West Texas. Mm -hmm. it's awesome. When I look up at the sky and my immediate response is like, whoa. Like, God, you're phenomenal. Yeah. Then I know, like, my mind's not fogged by so many things. Yeah. The times when I when I look at the beauty of creation of the sky and I'm just like, oh, you know, like clouds. Then I know, for me, that my mind's, like, in a different place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's when I notice the greatness of God, I know that and it doesn't matter how chaotic my life is. Man, you know what? One of the, I think one of the most intense times of, like, noticing the greatness of God was actually when, right after my mom died. Like, mm -hmm. literally, like... Mm -hmm. 15 minutes after my mom died um, and it was pitch black outside, but like you could hear the birds like mm -hmm. in the trees and it's, it's, so I don't think it's the chaos that masks it. I think it's our perspective that sure. masks in the it. midst of that. Yeah. 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 I think that there's, uh, I've, I've realized recently, it's probably because um, I brought this book up with you guys on the way out here to record, but the ruthless elimination of hurry by John Mark Comer. I, I've, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not endorsing the book by any means. A lot of things I, I was, I would say differently. Um, but it made, it made me kind of think more about busyness because kind of you, you had, you had brought up Mike and how I would say that most of the time there's a proper perspective, but I think that oftentimes what I do is I segment kind of segment my busyness instead of saying, bringing Christ into the busyness. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. like going to pick up my daughter, going to get groceries, Absolutely. doing like having Christ be a part of that. Like instead of saying, well, okay, well, let me get my busy life done so I can go do these Christian esque things. Yes. A shape of perspective of Christ's core. What we say every right. single week of, of, I was realizing I was segmenting these little times of my day instead of like, well, Jesus, come on along. <laughs> like right. be, be present. I want you to be present. I want to think of you in the midst of this. You know who That's does that really point. well mm -hmm. is uh, Lucy. Uh, oh yeah. So one of the very first things she ever said to me, and she said it to me a few more times since then, is she's super sweet. And she comes on Wednesday night to mm -hmm. Bible study. And she was, she was saying like, when I go out into the garden, you know, in the spring and I'm working in the flower beds or whatever, she's like, I just tell Jesus, come along with me, Jesus. I need, <laughs> I need you with me while I'm in the garden. And I want you to, yeah. I want you to teach me stuff as I'm messing around in the dirt. And as I see an earthworm, like she's just, but that's it. She's just yeah. very that's aware it. of the presence yep. of God. And, and you it's could, beautiful. You could say, someone's going to go, well, that's because she gets to work in the garden and it's like not busy and mindless. That's not it. No. That's the, the point is that she's- Because she still works a job and that's her attitude when she takes to her work. Right. And yeah. Right. The, life, uh, will, life will have ebb and flow. There will yeah. be times where you're crazy busy and times where you're not as busy. Most of us here in this part of the world are probably almost always busy because mm -hmm. we even we even measure it's our- It's the American dream. We even yeah, measure yeah. our standard. Like, how, how's it going? Oh man, it's just been so busy lately. It's like somehow we think that that answer gives us value in the other yeah. person's. Yeah. As I'm, if, I'm not lazy. As if I said, oh, yeah. which I get it, Cause sometimes I'll, I, I'm crazy busy right now. Like, mm -hmm. and some of it's self-inflicted, like some remodel projects, mm -hmm. some for you, Pierce, I'm doing yeah. <laughs> demo of my bathroom and I got to get it done. 
I'm leaving for Colorado and then I have two weeks when I get home to finish the entire bathroom. So oh, it'll fun. be crazy. Like I'm <laughs> self-inflicted business. I'm like crazy busy. Um, but it, it, it can't change that perspective. No. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it has to, in the midst of it, I can't wait on the time when I'm not going to be busy to if, start walking. If, yeah, if yeah. basically you say, well, I'm going to be really busy these two weeks, so I've got to check out of my relationship with God so I can do these other things, then then God for you is just a checklist. Absolutely. It's just a thing that had to get bumped because something else took priority. Absolutely. So the reality is for those two weeks, you will be spending the majority of your days, unless your boys have a sporting event or something like that, you will, but all the rest of your time, you will be spent in your bathroom working on the bathroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it does not mean that how you think about God or how you think about your connection to Christ changes. No. Yeah. And in fact, it doesn't mean that you won't even be contemplating those things because inevitably in times past when you've had busy seasons like this, I feel like Pierce and I always get a text at some point where you're like, hey, I had this thought. Yeah, it's because I'm, lis I'm listening to the Bible for <laughs> right. like... A or a, or a podcast a or whatever, <laughs> or right? Yeah. yeah, and it yeah. stirs up a thought for you, and you text it to us. You're it's like, a hey, I had this thought. Right? It's a it's a it's a mind. Yeah, perspective. Uh, we're we're ten minutes past this now, but I I wanted to say something uh, a little bit ago because we we're you said you know set aside a time to read the Bible or set a time you know uh, uh, however that looks. I don't think it has to be first thing in the morning. I think it really can be you know what works best for you mm -hmm. uh, as an individual. But one of the things that I use or as an individual or a plurality of people. Yeah. 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 A group of be, people. Yeah. Doesn't have to be you reading the Bible by yourself. Your yeah. yeah. And we would say there's actually some dangers in that. So, uh, or maybe there's more benefit is the way you say it. In, yeah. Yeah. In, there you go. In the group. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure we'd ever say there's danger in reading the Bible. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> there's, I think there's more blessing probably in community. Yeah. yeah what yeah. you meant is there's danger if you leave it to, on your own. Like there's danger in the sense that you can mis misunderstand the scriptures. Yeah. If you're, if, you just if you're only it on approaching own. it yeah, by yeah. yourself. Yeah. That's a better way to say that. Uh, I used to encourage people in this and now I actually actively discourage people from it. But, uh, um, there was, it, it's still, it's still pretty popular to do. Like people will always start in January. There's always a 90 day challenge to read the Bible. And this is kind of what mm. you were saying earlier about like, you know, we're looking for that challenge. And so mm -hmm. I think a lot of people who are making the New Year's resolutions and are deciding they want to start fresh and man, I got to get more serious about God. They go, man, I'm going to do this 90 day challenge. Mm -hmm. And and most of the people who are trying this are people who have never been through the Bible once on their yeah. own. And you're talking about reading 13 to 14, 14 chapters a day <laughs> to get through it. And at the outset, you're like, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. It's a heck of a lot if yeah. you're in Leviticus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super easy if you're, you're in Psalms. Yeah. But Ezekiel is really tough, 14 <laughs> chapters a day. Yeah. And even the Gospels, while their stories we're really familiar with, those are Long longer chapters. chapters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're sitting down and, you, and now you've created an opportunity for yourself, for you to feel more guilt and more shame. Yeah. Because here's what happens. You miss a day. And if you miss a day when you're trying to go through it in 90 days, the next day you need to read 28 chapters. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, crap. And then if you miss another, like all you've got to do is miss two days to be so far behind that it feels impossible to catch up. Yeah. And you probably quit. And you quit. Mm -hmm. And and so Which that's the wrong me, perspective. You could just be two days late. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could finish two days later, <laughs> you know, or when you get into the Psalms, instead of 13 chapters, read 15 because they're mm -hmm. easier reads or whatever, you know, like, but that's not the mindset that people no. take because yeah. they're, they're locked into this checklist mm -hmm. which is what he's talking about in colossians 2 right see that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits i'm not saying that those no, no, checklists no. are wrong but like this mindset that if you don't get it done by the 90 this days time. yeah it, it's yeah. you're wrong and awful and you suck well and, yeah. and he goes on to say in colossians 2 he goes these things this self-made religion he goes they have an appearance of wisdom looks good yeah. um and so people are saying, you know, I'm on this 90 day challenge and it looks great. Mm -hmm. But if after 90 days you finish it and your mind hasn't been changed to think more intentionally about Jesus, mm -hmm. then like what, what has it accomplished? Yeah. yeah what well, and what's, what's cool too, which by the way, sorry, real fast. Yeah. The reason I discourage that right out of the gate. Look, I don't think there's anything wrong with going to try to read the Bible through in 90 days. I think it's a I think it's a really bad idea if you've if you've never been through the Bible a handful. It's just could, hard. Yeah. Could we say it's it's probably from the wrong perspective? Yeah, it or it, could be from the wrong could perspective. Could be. I, I just think it's I think it's probably you're throwing yourself into the deep end when you don't have to. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like somebody saying, I really want to work out, so I'm going to run a marathon on New Year's Day. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I've never worked out yeah, before in my like, life. Like, you're jumping head for just to work towards the marathon. Yeah, like, run hey, run the marathon next year. I want to encourage you to, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's build, like, start building strength. Don't say, well, I can't ever run a marathon. Right. Start that's building a, that's strength. That's a fair point. No marathon runner would say, because they all have a, they all have a, uh, regiment where they're building up towards a marathon, yeah. they wouldn't cut that time in half had they never run a marathon before. Absolutely. They might right. be able to if they'd done it, if they'd run marathons already because yeah. they're already in that kind of shape. But no one first time marathon would say, yeah, you should do it in half the time that most people well, do the training. Yeah. Here, here's the, th please don't lose your thought. Okay. But I'm try not to. Let me try to yeah. think of, <laughs> of, of keywords. Oh, uh, the th for some people, the 90 day thing works. Just tell me that and then yeah. I'll, that I'll remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Brian Carroll, that dude is a runner. My goodness, that dude can run. Yeah. And his short run is like eight miles. And mm -hmm. he's doing it in like 550 or something like that That's per wild. mile. You know, yeah. like it's That's nuts. Insane. Yeah. So for me, for me, a long run is five miles. Yeah. That's a long run, <laughs> you know? And, and I'm doing it in nine minutes a mile. Yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. full three minutes a mile slower than him. Yeah. And the dude just went and ran a marathon uh, a month ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think he finished third overall, maybe second overall. He put up That's his nuts. best time ever. Uh, he only had one mile out of the 26.2 miles. He only had one mile that was over six minute pace. That's crazy. Because it was all uphill. Wow. Uh, yeah, right? Now, here's the thing. To your point, if if he was going to run a mile in March next month, he- Run a mile? Sorry, just one mile. Sorry, if he was going to run, a, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he yeah, can do that. He can do that, 100. <laughs> if he was going to run a marathon next month, he probably doesn't need a lot of training. What he would probably do is instead of doing his eight mile runs every day, he would do 16 mile runs every yeah, day or yeah, something yeah. like that. And he's able to do that. If I'm going to run a marathon in March, I'm already behind schedule. I should have started five months ago <laughs> I training. Run a marathon in March. <laughs> exactly, but that's my point. But but it, what it what it doesn't mean is that my two miles that I'm running every day. Is are, are, are bad. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I'm I'm running I'm running in a month, what he runs in three days, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter because we're we're both like the aim is to be healthy. Yeah, the growth is still there. The yeah. process is still there. The intentionality yeah. is still there. Yeah. So for some people, ninety days works. Go. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said ninety days, but there there are some people that will do these things. May it be a diet, maybe, may it be, um, a certain reading plan in the scriptures, may it be whatever. And then it'll work for them. I mean, what, I forget what this statistic is, but if you do something every day for what is it? 21 days and it, yeah, has, it has more of a tendency a, yeah. to become a habit. Yeah. Um, and so people basically employing that understanding of the way our mind and our schedules work and applying that into wherever they want growth. And then it works. Um, and then what happens is you have books like what I brought up a second ago, uh, the ruthless elimination of hurry, where, he, he does try to push the point of, of a mindset, having a mindset centered on Christ, not on the business of this world, not sure. allowing the, the world to be elevated above our understanding of Christ, taking time to really just take a breath in who we are in Christ and just relax in him. And, and may that may, and he gives very, very various points of what that looks like, but then he goes off for a long time of what worked for him. And so I think the tendency of what people are going to read is they're going to think, okay, well, this guy's got it all down. He, he eliminated hurry. I need to employ what they did. This person mm -hmm. seemed to have a lot of growth spending three months straight in the word and dedicating an hour or two a day. I need to do that for myself. Um, this person, so same thing with, with running and, and things like that, instead of realizing, okay, what is the goal and how can I, knowing, knowing, knowing myself, knowing my personality, knowing these things, how can I um, approach, maybe not, goal's the wrong word kind of to strip away from earlier, but understanding what is the, what is the intention behind, right. behind what I'm doing here? Instead of saying, instead yeah. of saying, I, I have to get closer to God. So therefore I have to read the Bible in 90 days. Yeah. We're not I, striving. If you say, I want to get closer to God, we're not striving for a certain point where you're like, okay, now I'm closer I, to God. Mm -hmm. I got it. And, and if, and if <laughs> I'm successful, yeah. I made it. And if, if any of us ever do something like that, may it be a, a certain change in lifestyle, a certain routine that we, that we employ, it's, um, it's encouraged conversations like today are encouraging to when we do those things, or if we have done those things to shape our language, to be, I'm happy the Lord utilized this to, sure. to shape my perspective of him. Instead of saying, instead of putting the weight on what is done, yep. putting the weight on how it. God moved. Instead of putting the weight on what's done. Exactly. Yeah. So like for that's some people, it a, may be, that's still a perspective arc, of yeah. I'm the most important thing. Absolutely. I want to grow. I want to be at this place instead of saying, uh, my heart's just to walk in him. Yeah. And this is, and, and I think in community, like we get to encourage one another. So like you, you, you say it a lot, Ryan, that like, 
that we are all vastly different people. And like, we, yeah. we, we are able to, because we know that we're able to encourage one another, uh, very intentionally. We're able mm-hmm. to build up into each other intentionally. We're able to, to bring up, um, you reading versus Micah listening, like, and not have any qualms with any of those things, but just knowing right. how each other works and moves. And so, but also broadening that we don't know every single other Christian in the world. And so if we begin to shape our language and put the weight where it belongs on the, on the working of God, instead of a routine, instead of a checklist, instead of these things, yeah. that doesn't strip away that sometimes those checklists and routines works. But what it does is it puts the proper perspective on yeah. the working of God and the moving of God well, within and, his people. And Micah noticing the sky and just being like in awe of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I uh, um, because I have to get into 45 minute workouts today and we were going to record today, I, I went outside this morning at seven. It was 30 degrees. Yeah, it's cold. Too and, cold. Uh, and I, because one of the workouts has to be outside. Mm hmm. And so I went outside, I dressed up like Rocky Balboa and I went and worked out on the heavy bag for nearly an hour. And as the sun began to come up and peek through the trees and stuff, like I was, I was listening to worship music, which is mm-hmm. not no, my normal workout music, but I was mm-hmm. listening to worship music and I was praying about some things and I was asking God to give me some direction on some stuff in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and just trying to understand better who God was while I'm hitting the heavy bag. And, and that's kind of your point, mm-hmm. Micah, is that like, this isn't compartmentalized. Mm-hmm. Um, every time, every time I get paid for a painting and I've said this on here before I get the family together. I'm like, look, God provided for us again. We need to Mm -hmm. stop and thank God for what he's done. Like we're, we're seeking to take the, I I am trying in my family and in my life to, to think so completely on God that, uh, how do I say this? Like, Mm. I, I went to camp. I went to camp as a kid and I would go to camp so that I could think about God. Mm. And what I, where I'm at now in my adult life is there, I, I don't want there to be any times I'm not thinking about him. Mm. I, okay. I don't Can know I how to thought? say that. Yeah, please. And I think is what you're trying to say. I appreciate that you always fix me. So thank you. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Romans 12 to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Colossians 3. Mm-hmm set your minds on the things above. I don't think that's a, for sure, Romans 12, one, when he says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, this is not a continual offering. The tense mm-hmm. in that Greek word is like, you. this is like a one-time offering. I, I'm, I don't know. I haven't looked in Colossians 3. My guess is it's not set your mind on things above. Like tomorrow you wake up and reset your mind on things above. Gotcha. It's, so I don't think it's that we wake up and go, I'm going to make sure that I'm thinking about God today. I think the implication is more Colossians 2, 6. Mm-hmm. Walk in him, do your yeah. life mm-hmm. in him. Yeah. And what Paul's actually saying is change the way you think yeah. in this one moment. Shift your thinking so that you can do life in him. Yeah. And as you do life in him, you're, 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 you will be thinking about him. You will be acting in him, if you will. You know what I mean? So it's, mm. and, I, and I know that there's the rebuttal to that is someone's going to be like, what if my mind goes off in other places? I don't think Paul's saying don't like- Ever think about stuff. Don't not yeah. think. I think what he's saying is this is a perspective shift. This right. is a life-changing moment when you decide, I'm done trying to live for my own glory and I'm ready to live for the glory of mm. Jesus. And it's a mindset shift. And then that causes you to act in a certain way in life. Yeah. So I don't, because I think what, you, what you're saying, um, someone's going to take it and go, okay, I'm going to wake up every morning and say, God, I'm going to try to think about you today. Right. And I don't think that's, that's going to work. Yeah, it's, um, I don't think of Michelle every second of every day, but Michelle is in every decision I make. Yeah. Or maybe a better way to say yeah. that is uh, you don't wake up every morning and go, you know what? Michelle's my wife today. Yeah. Yeah, you've said something like that before, I think, at a marriage conference or something. Probably, you, yeah. You I don't, I don't change. You are her yeah. husband. She yeah. is your wife. Yeah. And when when you made that life-changing moment when we said, when you said, yeah. we call each other husband and wife, it doesn't mean that you don't think about that sometimes. It doesn't yeah. mean that there are times that it's not on your mind, but it doesn't change the reality that you do life together as husband and wife now. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you've given me a brilliant idea for a future podcast. Um because what you said, and I think it's so key, is that the goal isn't to wake up every morning and set our mind on Jesus. I think people will look at Psalms like David, where he says, you know, I bring my offering to you in the morning. So like, Mm -hmm. and we do that and we make it a rule and we say that like, but David's heart was set on God. Right. And, and so it's not, it's not that we're trying to do that every day. Maybe it, 
it's that we are to we're trying to develop such a relationship with Christ where that is what you have said already two or three times, Micah, that, that that's us just walking in Jesus, yeah, like yeah. we're walking in Christ. But it's interesting because I think we need to talk about this in a future podcast, and I'm just going to pitch the idea right now. People treat repentance the same. That repentance is an over and over and over and over thing that we do again and again and mm. again when the mm. biblical concept is an about face. It is turning around and going the other direction. Yeah. It's a, it is a decision that's made, yeah. and then you move the other way. And we're not talking that you've never caught your toe on a crack or tripped or fallen or whatever, but the, the repentance is intact because there was a decision that was made. To turn the other direction. Yeah, and, and it's not repenting a million times a day. You know, so anyway. we just need to, you just need to put repentance on there. Yeah, so we'll talk about repentance at some point. Thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope. Good discussion. Uh, I enjoyed yeah, this one. Yeah, for sure. Um, we'll have to see how Josh feels. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love, Josh, I, I mean this sincerely. I, I love that you give us your play-by-play thoughts <laughs> as you're is. listening to the podcast. <laughs> I truly love it. I it's think so, the only thing I don't love is the Android text because as I'm like, have my headphones on listening, every time Josh sends a text and then one of you likes it, it reads the entire freaking oh, text back right. to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm like, I just, I'm trying to listen to the word or a podcast and Siri's just reading me this text, same text over and over and over again. Pierce Love likes Josh Rachel's <laughs> message. Hey guys, I think this. <laughs> you know what, the worst the other day, I found uh, Chrissy Dyer sent me some Amazon stuff. Mm-hmm. We're, we're looking for some. Uh, and some, did it read you all the letters? It read me every bit of the oh, Amazon thing. Oh my thing. gosh. <laughs> I was like, uh, and she is an iPhone. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know yeah, what that was. Oh, that's, that's weird. <laughs> uh, simpler view of setting your mind on Christ. What do you think that would be, Micah? Um, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I need to go back and count how many we've just said. Hey, do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're simpler, out, out of a hundred and something. I think episodes. a simpler just, viewpoint of it is this: this isn't setting your mind on the things above, or being renewed by the, or <laughs> yeah. Uh, what does he say? But being renewed by the trans. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah, totally yeah. jacking that one up. <laughs> uh, I need some more Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Um, those, I think those are like perspective shifts rather mm-hmm. than like a checklist to do every day. Absolutely. Where you say like right here, right now, all right, I'm 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 done thinking about me in the forefront. I'm mm-hmm. ready to think about him and him alone. Absolutely. And then watch how God begins to, begins to work through you in that and work in you in that. Yeah, and we didn't really say this explicitly. Maybe, maybe we did, but I think that that's also just so freeing because- I think what we tend to do, not having understood kind of the context of these places is we'll see, set your mind on Christ as like a commandment, like, oh, I got to figure that out. I got to figure out how to do that instead of shaping our perspective to understand who we are, who we are in him and just living in him. It seems to be the contrary. Mm-hmm. Like a simple way to think about it. It's the contrary of living for your own glory. Mm-hmm. Don't be conformed to the pattern of the world. Mm-hmm. The contrary is. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Shift your perspective. Put Absolutely. off the old self. Be mm-hmm. renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Put on the new self created in the righteousness of God. Right. Or likeness of God. Right. Righteous only. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Dope. Sweet. Uh, you know who my favorite dope sweet friend is? <laughs> <laughs> it's Steven. We are at the Garden Audio as always. Hey. Be sure to go. Steven. Steven. Go follow Steven uh, at the Garden Audio on Instagram. Go see what he's got going on over there. Talk to him. Give him a like. All that fun stuff. When I am less busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get in here and record some songs. It'll be dope. And you're going to want to be going ahead and following his account so you can keep up to date with some of that. And just to let everybody know, because it's been months and months and months since I said I was going to finish this and I haven't yet. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, because I just couldn't find the right thing. I finally found the platform for us to use that's not woke Patreon. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. Awesome. Yeah, it's called Parallel Economy. Parallel Economy. So we'll we'll try to get that set up in the next few months. Awesome. Sweet. Sounds great. So yeah, so, and yeah, you're going to want to see those updates on social media and stuff as well and also through the through the podcast. And so be sure to like on uh, and follow on Instagram and Facebook as well as subscribe on whatever platform you use, YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all that fun stuff to keep up to date. So that way every Tuesday you get a little chime and every, every now and then you can scroll through your feed and see what's going on with us. Um, yeah, and all that's tagged in the show notes. We're so thankful for all you guys listening and being a part of the Simpler community. Today's episode was uh, was stemmed from a conversation and topic from Stacy. So we want to hear from you guys. We want to hear more topic ideas that we can talk about. And, and send Stacy a letter and tell him his arms aren't big. Yeah, that's right. Dude, he's... <laughs> Just one more drive at the very end. I'm going to get a text from him and he's going to be like, that's it, I'm working out three hours a day. <laughs> yeah, that's right.
will he write a letter first? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case the text doesn't go through. <laughs> walk, it, uh, walk it down the street. Yeah, that's right. Put it in your mailbox. Sit on his horse. <laughs> I heard a lot of talk about pigeon mail the other day. We can talk about that later. Um, <laughs> as always, keep Christ's core. What could be simpler than that? We'll catch y'all next week. Bye. Bye.